Hello. I've been asked to make some um, breeches dating from about 1740. And what I'd normally do is just butcher some pattern from a later period to make them into um, breeches of that roughly that period. However, I thought, no, I'm going to do this properly this time. So um, I've got out a book called The Cut of Men's Clothes by Nora Waugh. Um, and I've had a look through. And although it's 1740 I'm looking at, um, or I need to make, I found these which are 1730. If I go forward, if I go forward a page or two, um, the next breeches that are shown are 1760, so they're too late. Um, and looking at them, they're not dissimilar to um, these ones in 1730. What's interesting is that the arrangement for the um, buttonholes and buttons is more how we think of traditionally now. Um, you've still got a fly um, buttonhole at the front rather than the flap front which came in a little bit later. Um, you've got a Muralia pocket still, it's very high kind of back to it as well. Um, however, because I know I'm doing 1740, 1760 technically is too late. Okay, so I'm going to err on the side of caution and go with the 1740, um, 1730s pattern. Um, so I'm not going to go through how to do this. There is a method that I use, which I will show you in another video. But what I wanted to show you was um, today is how to scale up. So what I've done is I've drafted this. Um, I've just copied it. OK, um, so I've just copied those three pieces there. I haven't done the knee band. Um, I've just done the waistband, the breeches front and breeches back. And this is what you can see here. And then what I've done is I've measured it all and worked out what size these are for. And in, in my estimation, and it is an estimation, these should fit somebody who is about 30 to 32 waist, judging that by the, the width of the waistband, okay? And then um, what happened with these breeches is that they were gathered in to fit that waistband. So although this bit here would measure to be about, um, I think I worked out to be about 44 inches in total, um, because it's gathered in to this waistband, and that's what the what um, Nora Wall measured the waistband to be. This would fit a 30 to 32 waist. Okay, so my guy is a 41 inch waist. So technically, this would fit him. I just make the waistband bigger, but then I would lose all the gathering. So, and the other thing is that they're sh too short in the body here. They might have this high back, but ultimately, once that's gathered and you allow for gravity, that's okay. so if you think that is his waist and that is his crutch line, that's quite short. Um, so I'm going to make it bigger this way, but then I also need to make it bigger that way. Also, around the knee area, um, this is too small for him as well. This works out to be about 14 inches, and his is, his knee um, circumference is 17 inches. So rather than try and redraft it completely, I'm going to do something um, which is often recommended in books like this, um, and patterns of, I don't think these specific books um, suggest it, but any books that have given you some kind of pattern on either plain or um, as um, the historical um, School of Historical Dress now do with, and Janet Arnold um, originally did with her books, um, they put them onto a squared paper. Um, they often suggest, not these ones, but more modern books often suggest that you trace the pattern and then you explode the pattern and to square it out, um, to size it up. So I'm just going to show you how to do that. OK, so as so I say, I've drafted I've... that pattern exactly as it is in the book. And then what I've done on it, I've drawn a line through approximately the center, but I've gone over slightly because I don't want to be too near this inside leg seam. So I've gone up here. I've done the same on the front and then I've done a line, drawn a line through which goes through at the same level on the back piece and the front piece, but it is through, it's not on the crutch line, it's above that, so that I can then make this bigger this way, okay? So next step is to cut it all out.
cut my three pattern pieces out. Um, I'm just going to put on here, this is the buttonhole stand. And I'm just going to put cut separately because I think it is a separate piece. That's for separately. Um, and I'm just going to, but I'm just going to tuck it out of the way for the minute. And I've done the same here. I've written on the fly piece, cut separately, and I'm just going to fold that out of the way as well. Okay. So the next step, oh, and the one other thing I suddenly thought of as I was cutting it out, I thought about extending it here. But I think also I'm probably going to need to extend it in the um, length of the leg as well. Because at the moment, the inside leg measurement, so watch to underneath, at the moment is 14 inches. Um, he's got a 29 inside leg, and which would, uh, even if you just halve that, it's going to be 14 and a half. Um, but then it's got to go below the knee. So I would think that he wants about a 16. Um, now I'm just going to make sure that I line up. So I'm lining up these lines so that I make sure that when I put the line through the leg, it goes in the same place on the front piece and the back piece. Um, you'll see why in a moment. And although I went to the trouble of labelling these pieces, I then realised I'm going to chop them up so it really didn't matter. So um, what I now need to do, a little arrow on the lines that I'm going to actually cut because there are a couple of other lines. Okay. Um, and then, because I've still got a line here, which is my crutch line, which I'm not going to do, and I'm not going to do that line either. That was just a drafting line. So I'm going to cut this piece this line along here, this line down here, and this line there. So I'm going to number it, and I'm going to do that's 1F front, 2F, and then 3F, 4F, and 5F, and 6F. So that's I know that that is my 1, my one front, 2 front, 3 front, 4 front, 5 front, 6 front, okay? Um, what you could also do, if you if you think you're going to forget which bit goes to which bit, you could also take a photo of it as it is, and then you know what your what it's going to look like once you've cut it up. Okay, so I'm just going to do the same with the back. So I'm just going to draw on a little arrow to tell me which line I'm cutting. Now I'm not going to cut that one, and I'm not going to cut that one. So it's purely going to be this one, and this one, and then that is going to be back, one back, two back, three back, four back, five back, and six back, okay? So I'm going to cut the front one first. Ideally, you've done what I've done here, which is I've laid out my paper underneath, ready for the next stage, because what you don't want to do is stack them all up and then forget which order they go in. So what I'm doing is I'm going to lay them up there in the order that they're going to end up lying in, okay? Okay, so that's my back pieces. So normally I would actually do it the way I've drafted it, I've laid it out here, but I'm a bit worried about the width of my paper not being wide enough, so I'm actually going to turn the pattern pieces around. I haven't cut the waistband yet, I'll come back to that later on, okay? Okay, so... I've worked out that my waistline or the width of my patterns for the front and back of my breeches in total needs to be 29 inches wide. Um, I've just laid them out, I've drawn a line through what was the waistline or approximate waistline measurement um, on the originals um, and I've just drawn that line and extended it. Now for uh, currently if we made these breeches up they would be 44, 40, about 45 and a half inches, okay, to there, which the reason I'm going to there is because that is where the centre front is, okay, of the, the front of the breeches. Okay, so if we just made them up as they were, um, added seam allowance, sewed them together, they would measure approximately 40, 45 and a half inches, okay. 
So we need to make those bigger. We, we decided on a number of 29 inches. So I'm going to carry on that line and mark a point here, which is 29. Okay. So that's where we need to end up having that piece sitting there. So I'm just going to draw a line. Okay. And then I'm going to take that piece here and I'm going to move it to there. And I'm going to keep it currently so that it lines up with the top of the piece that it was cut from down there. Okay. So I've literally just where it is, it doesn't have to be exact at the moment because we're going to move everything around, but just to get, get a kind of idea of where it's going to end up. I'm just going to move that straight across. You could draw a line there, I guess, um, but I'm just going to move it straight across at the moment and lay it there. Okay. I realized when I started doing this, this is a really good reason to have pattern weights. I've never understood the reason for it before, but now I really understand why you'd have pattern, pattern weights. So I'm just going to use a bit of chalk to hold that one in place for the moment. Now, the next step I'm going to do is I know that this front piece and this back piece are approximately the same width. So I'm just going to find the middle point. So half the 29 is 14 and a half, which is there. So I'm going to move that piece over. And again, I'm just going to keep it. And I know that here it sits in line with the top there. So I'm just going to move it over and put it there for the moment. It's not aiming to be nearer that piece or nearer the side piece. I'm just putting it in kind of roughly, I suppose, not even thinking about it. I'm kind of roughly putting it in between where my new side seam is going to be. So roughly the same distance here and here. Okay, but we'll move it around in a moment, so it doesn't need to be exact. Um, and I'm just going to put my scissors on top of there for the moment. Okay, so that's roughly where the front pieces are going to go. And then the back piece is going to stay where it is, 2B. But I'm going to move 1B over and do a similar thing to what I've done for um, 2F, the front piece, so that it is approximately in between. Okay. And what I did on this piece, I did draw a line down, so I'm just going to make sure that stays in line with that. So that piece is going to stay there. Okay. So what I'm going to do now is I'm just going to move that ruler up. No, I'm going to, yes, I'm going to move that up and I'm just going to put it like that because then I'm going to move these pieces over as well. So I'm going to move that over to there, that piece to sit under there, and that piece to sit under there. And very carefully, and I'm going to do the same with these two bits here, just move those over to that side. Move that to sit like that, and that to sit like that. And then very carefully, I'm going to draw a line down to show where my new side seam is. So I'm using the Pattern Master because it's got this right angle, so I know that I'm going to be creating a right angle here. I'm just going to take that down. Okay. And then just tidy this bit up again. Okay. And then I also said that I wanted to make the crutch depth deeper. So at the moment, the crutch depth at the side seam is. So that's the waistline there, and this is the crutch depth here, is about eight and a quarter, or eighth and one-eighth, I'm being pedantic. Um, and I want it to be at least 10 inches. So I've drawn a line already here, and that is going to be where my new crutch line is. So that means, if I just lay that on there like that, you can see where that line is. Top edge of my ruler is where that line is. And then that means that I'm going to move these pieces down so that this crutch line, which is drawn onto this pattern piece, is down on that line. Okay. okay. So that's those place pieces set. These two in the middle, doesn't really matter where those go. It's really your outside edges that you need to worry about. Um, so what I'm actually going to do is just draw a line through here, which is where my front, what I would call your centre front, but it's it's kind of not your centre front. Um, I'm just going to continue that line through so that I know that when I've got that line there, 
it's that centre front line coming through there and I know that that pattern piece then is in exactly the, the right spot to be directly underneath that pattern piece above. Okay, so those two I'm very happy with. I'll put my scissors on that piece. Um, this piece, I'm just going to check the distance on either side. So I've got, at the moment, I've got two inches on that side and about one and three quarters on this side. So I'm just going to move that over ever so slightly so it's just under two on both. It doesn't really matter, but you don't want it, You because what you're going to do is reshape this anyway. But it's, it's just have it in a fairly central space. I need to now find something to put this on this. I think we'll just use that. Okay. And then on this side, I'm going to do the same. So I can just see that that's ever so slightly different on that side. So I'm just going to check. And I've got one and a quarter on that side and one and a quarter on that side. So those two pieces are okay. These two pieces are okay. Um, then I'm going to move this piece down to here. That piece is sat. Like I say, it doesn't really matter for these two pieces right in the middle because they're, they're not affecting anything. This piece, I'm just going to line up with the line that I drew, which is following through here, so that I know that that's exactly beneath that piece. I'll put a, pin on, a pair of scissors on it. So that, those top eight pieces, I'm happy with where they are, okay? I'm going to use masking tape to secure them in place, um, and then I'll show you in a moment how to create the new outside edge secure them so they don't disappear but we need to sort out the length of these now as well so i need these to be about 16 17 16 inches long on the inside leg seam and at the moment they're 14 now oh that's very close i've got 16 is just on the edge of my paper here or 15 and a half let's do 15 and a half okay so So then with this piece here, the inside leg, I'm going to, I've drawn a line down. I'm just going to redraw it because now that I've taped that in place, it's not quite right. So that line, draw down like that. Okay. And that means that this piece, when I move it down, it will stay on that line. Okay. Put that there. We tape it in place. We then need to line this piece up with that top pattern. Actually, not with that piece, with that edge, thinking about it, I need to bring that over and tuck that out of the way because we need that shaping here and then that needs to match up to that line okay because that's where that line continues across the bottom of the front okay we probably need to add some paper onto the bottom of my patterns but we'll worry about that when we get to it okay so that's sitting there so that it's in line with that piece and that will create the front bottom edge of the breeches okay we need to check though before we do anything too much we might need to bring that piece over because it depends whether i've made this too wide okay but that's the point of taping it with masking tape we can always move things around afterwards so and again the same with this one i'm going to put this piece up against there now i know that the point of that is in line with that line we may not have anything else to reference so i'm just going to draw continue that line going over Okay, this piece we know will come down and that point will hit that line. And the edge of that pattern piece on this side will be in line with that line. So that will sit about there. So we'll take that there for the moment. And then this piece, the point of that because that folds, that sits behind the breeches or behind the button stand and goes up. 
so the point of that will sit there okay so that's literally just exploding them out and now my waistline if i was to make these up straight away the waistline of that is now the right size to fit into the right size waistband okay but i can't really cut this out like it is and for a start i don't know how wide here is um in relation to what size my um gentleman's underneath is now i've got a measurement of 17 inches for him and what we've got is about 20 and a quarter so we need to lose at least three inches so what i would rather because this side seam needs to stay straight we're going to move these pieces over okay so if he's 17 it's just under eight under nine is half so we'll do eight and three quarters no it needs to be eight and a half doesn't it eight and a half there and I'm just going to flip that out of the way and eight and a half is there okay so that means that this piece and this piece I'm going to move inwards so keeping it in line with that line still 18 and a half is here sorry eight and a half is here like that and then do the same on this side Okay, but then you'll still see if I use this ruler, those two bits don't match up. Okay, and it's probably the same on here, it's not so obvious on this side. So, on this one, we can literally, I think, just do that. We can literally just do that. And that will be fine so that's our back inside leg the front one is a bit more difficult but what we've got to do if i did what i'll do first is i'm just going to draw a line that extends this out this one because it sits out further and what we need to do is aim for a middle distance so something like something like that so it's approximately halfway between that point and that point but it needs to retain the shape down here okay okay so that's my front inside leg and my back inside leg the thing i will check as well is what they actually measure so this one Always measure a curve on the side of your tape measure. So this has ended up being 16 and a quarter, which will be fine for him. And then let's see what the back one is. So the back has ended up being 16 and a quarter. Perfect. So that's my inside leg. Um, with the reshaping at the bottom, you just want to create a curve here, going that way. And then the curve going the other way, I think it's just the edge of the paper, so that's perfect. So I'm just going to stick that down because it's curling up because I keep leaning on it. Okay, but that join those two together and you've got the perfect front curve and then you've got the perfect back curve there. I'm just going to take off a little bit off each side. Put a bit of tape over and then we just reshape it like that. Okay, so that's the bottom of it all done. Um, the back center back panel I think we use this one and again it's finding roughly the midpoint it's not that different okay if I gain a little bit I'm really not worried because it is a bigger size um, so if it ends up being a bit too big and it's it's gathered in so if it if it is too big you know too too big it doesn't really matter because it's going to be gathered in and it's not a fitted garment um if when the guy wears it it is too big that's when we have a conversation okay okay so this so front edge i am going to just change quite dramatically actually after saying that because if i go to that point that's the waistline to that point it changes the angle quite dramatically but i can't come this way because if i come this way i'll end up extending this line and i don't want to do that so it's just changing the angle 
this is probably normal because we're looking at different size waist. 30, 32 is quite small. 42 is quite, it's not large, it's average. But, you know, well, 36, 38 is average, but it's on the larger side. So the larger your waist gets, the more volume you need, which means this is going to go out, okay? Um, doesn't mean that your legs are going to get any longer. just means that your waist is getting wider, which means that the angles, which were like that, are going to straighten more, okay? So I'm happy with that. I'm just going to draw in that um, buttonhole stand. Okay, and that's my front edge. It's the side seam and that's the back seam. So the last bit is to do the waistline. So okay. I can't, now this is where you do find quite a difference in heights usually. So you see you've got a difference here. This should be the same. You've got quite a difference. Okay. So it's again, it's finding the, the right line to follow. I'm just going to tape those corners down so that we can see where they are at the moment. So it's there. Front's not too bad actually. Um, but I'm going to come off there and I think I'm going to raise that waist ever so slightly. This is just my kind of initial plan. That goes like that and then this piece goes up. We're going to aim for that point again. So I'm going to come halfway above there, halfway below there. And then that line will come down and I think we'll come up a half an inch approximately. And then this piece, I think, will join then to that point. We'll just go over that bit completely. Or should we? No, we won't. We'll come down half. See where that, and that will take us up to that point anyway. So it will come up like that. Okay. So that's my new waistline. Okay. My breeches. So those should now. The last thing I've got to do is do the waistband, and then these should be. I can cut them out. Um, what I'll end up doing is taking off all the pieces. Make sure I've drawn round everything. So I need to draw round the centre back and everything. Make sure I've drawn round everything to create an outside edge. Um, and then once I've done that, I can take off all the pieces and. Um, use them as my pattern um, and add, add seam allowance onto them and then that's ready to go. So with the waistband, I've cut it in half, don't really need to do that but I'm going to cut it in half and I'm just going to stick that bit there. Like that. And then it needs to be <clears throat> Forty-four, so twenty-two is the half. Forty-four is the full length, full circumference around the body. He's forty-two waist, um, but I'm just allowing for the fact that we've got to have an overlap for button and buttonhole. Okay, so I've allowed an inch, which I think will be enough. What I'll probably do is when I come to doing seam allowance, I'll probably make the seam allowance bigger or longer at the front, so that if I need to um, adjust it. So if I don't think an inch on each side is enough, then I'll um I can fiddle it around so that it's a bit more. Okay. Um wonderful thing about seam allowance is you can just add to it, you know, make it bigger and then you can always chop it off, but you're not um really changing your pattern too much. You're allowing for the worst basically. So if you're ever in doubt about things, um always add on extra seam allowance. There are times, unfortunately, when it gets in the way, but most places, side seams, waist lengths, etc. you can do that. Okay, so then that's your new waistband. So ultimately, I'd take those bits back off and then cut it out. So it's a bit ad hoc, a bit all over the place, apologies. Um, but I hope that that's kind of explained how you size up something. Um, and what you've got to think about, you don't think about just he's got a bigger waist, so we just make it all bigger. He had a bigger waist, but and he had a bigger um, circumference around his leg, but they're not the same amount. So we've just got to bring that in. So we have to re readjust that. Um, not only did he have a big enough, bigger waist, he's also taller. 
um, and you've got to think about inside leg and girth, you know, the body rise. Um, so from your waist to crutch or crotch, waist to crotch is as important as just adding on um, length to the inside leg. OK, um, so you've got to think about all those. It, it's not just let's make it bigger that way. You've got to think about that way, but in two separate pieces, especially when you're looking at trousers. OK, so hopefully that's been of use. Hopefully it's been interesting. Hopefully towards the end of the week, I'll get time to do a separate video about how to actually um, get this from the book onto the piece of paper to start off with. Um, it involves drawing lots of different things on a piece of paper. So I, what you do really need to do it is to get a photocopier um, and then you can fiddle around with it um, without drawing on your book. Um, OK, so hope you've enjoyed it. Um, and if you have, please like and subscribe to my channel. Thank you ever so much. Take care. Bye bye.